ladies, and welcome to the first official Modern Female Podcast episode. I am so glad that you have decided to join me today. I am your host, Z, and if you gave episode zero a listen, then you'll know that that's all you're really going to know about me for now. Actually, I can give you one more piece of information about me, and that is that I have actually been single for most of my life, and I'm now at a point where I think I might be getting a level of understanding of what the cosmic system for dating might be. I want to talk to you today about what I think are the five steps in dating, which can take you to a place where you might actually feel quite comfortable with being picky in who you date, no matter what anyone says to you. I would say that this system is going to make the most sense for those who feel like they're perpetually dating and staying perpetually single. I feel like as years have gone by in my dating, it's become common to hear, don't be so picky or you shouldn't be so picky with who you're dating. And while I feel like this usually comes from a good place, there are definitely pros and cons to this advice. I think not being picky can allow you to experience different kinds of people, but you also don't want to end up in a situation where you're settling for less than what you deserve. I think we can actually connect the two so that our experiences can get us to a place where we're not settling. I would say that the most important thing in dating is understanding what you want so that your expectations are clear to yourself. And I don't mean you wanting a tall, dark, and handsome guy because that's what you've seen in the movies. I think it's very, very easy to have a ton of outside influences through media, through movies and TV, even from friends on social media. This isn't news. This is something I think people talk about a lot more now openly on social media for sure. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to have this influence, but uh, it is important to make sure that you actually want what you think you want and that you're not just subliminally being told that you should want this or that. Honestly, there are a lot of dysfunctional representations of relationships in the media, which is huge cause to actually be very careful. When you're young, it's even easier to get swept up in it all, but some great lessons can come out of that as well. So the system that I've kind of stumbled on is not something revolutionary that I've come up with, I'll be honest. But I think for anyone else who, like me, feels like they're in a dating drought and nothing is coming from the dates that you're going on, I think this is what might be going on for you. This is the five-step system you might be running through right now. I think becoming conscious of it and incorporating some inner work and spirituality can help you harness the power of it. Also keeping in mind that there's no real timeline I can give you for this. Everything depends on each person and you might be able to even do some of these steps simultaneously. So I'm going to start with the steps going with step one, which is just dating. So like I said, I warned you, this isn't a revolutionary thing I've come up with. So obviously dating is involved. At this step, you're going to listen to your friend or your mother's advice of don't be so picky. You're really allowing yourself to gather information, gather data on what you like, what you don't, affirming and rejecting the different ideas you had in your mind of your future partner and future relationship. Taking the approach of it being data collection can make it easier to relax your expectations with your potential dates. I know for me personally, expectations have been my downfall for a huge part of my dates. But also make sure that you're not becoming rigid or cold, like still have fun with your dates, you know? And along with what you like and what you don't like, pay attention to any patterns that might be coming up. Are you dating guys with certain personality traits, certain values? Are these traits or values things that you desire in your actual partner? This takes you to step two, analysis. Now that you have some clearer information on yourself and your dates, it's time to look within yourself, really self-reflect. It's ideal to be as objective as possible here. Pretend you're talking to your best friend. I think this is an exercise that can kind of make this easier. Pretend she comes to you and says, I've been dating for the past little while and I've realized that I don't like guys like this, but I do like these traits and these personalities but I see that I'm dating guys like this or like that. Obviously fill in the blanks based on what you've kind of figured out for yourself. The big thing here is to identify what's going on with the guys you're dating, but 
also identify what's going on with yourself when you date these guys. I kind of, I hope that makes sense to you. It can be really helpful to take on therapy to work through any heavy, heavy patterns that you are seeing in your dates, patterns that may be super deep, maybe rooted in childhood. Therapy is being much more advocated these days openly, and I think it's a great avenue to take, but I know it's not always an affordable or accessible option. There are a lot of other resources out there that can help. I'm not going to say that these are complete substitutes for the work a therapist can help you do, but it can be something. There are tons of therapists and psychiatrists who have picked up making videos for Instagram and TikTok, even on YouTube. You can get some starting information there and continue to do your own research and always be mindful of who and what your sources are here and that you're not just getting random information from just anybody on the internet. This step is probably the most difficult one of analysis, and it's going to probably take some time to really, really get through. It might even be ongoing. There are sometimes things that we can carry that even a therapist may take a long time to work through, so just be prepared for that. Now, step three, evolution. All right, so now as you've been going through all this self-discovery you can begin developing a more exact idea of what you want in your partner and thus how you can be the most fulfilling partner for them. Now, this should feel authentic to you. It shouldn't feel like you're forcing yourself to be a certain way that is really uncomfortable or awkward for you. If that's the case, then you probably aren't quite there in terms of deciphering what partner you want and what relationship you want. When it does feel authentic, you will be the best version of yourself which is going to then complement the best version of your partner, and it can encourage both of you to bring your best selves to the relationship as often as possible. I think journaling is a great tool for this. I've done this by creating uh, two columns whenever I've journaled on this part specifically. I'll make two columns on the page, one with the qualities that I want and admire in a partner, and then what quality I have or can work on to complement that. For example, if you want a partner who's a gentleman and opens doors for you and such, then it's really important that you're the kind of person that accepts that treatment. If you always reject gestures like that, then obviously men will not continue to do that for you or you're going to end up being with men who don't even think to do that in the first place. I speak on personal experience with that. I have always had a bit of a I grew up having a bit of a complex about letting men do things for me, which I'm trying to shift out of now that I can talk about in another episode. But um, I've definitely learned that I have to let people do things for me if I want them to do things for me. Otherwise, why would they? And then this can this kind of ideology can apply to several different traits that you may be looking for. So then you go into shep- a step, excuse me, step four, the shift. Now that you have an idea of where you want to improve yourself, start. Start on that work. As you step into that feeling or energy, your mindset is going to change. Now that you feel much more certain on what you want and where you want to improve yourself, making exceptions is not going to feel right anymore. At this point, taking that advice of not being picky just t- just throw it out the window. You know what you want now, girl. Own it. I personally experienced this shift within the last few months during COVID lockdown. While I'm sure I'm not finished figuring out what I want or where I can improve myself, I feel very confident in what I've figured out so far. And I'm in a place where it doesn't phase me if someone tells me I'm being picky or that my expectations are unrealistic. I know myself I know what suits me, my likes and dislikes, and what kind of lifestyle I want at this point. So even if someone tries to advise me on dating, I just smile and nod. And this takes us to step five, and it's patience. Now, this is probably the second hardest part, second to step two. It's actually where I'm mostly at myself, though self-development never stops, and I definitely bounce between the steps a bit. So if you're more spiritual... You may have heard of the term divine timing, which is basically the cosmic timing at which you and your partner will finally meet and come together. This part is hard because there's not much for you to do except continue the self-improvement you've already been doing because your partner will also have to get to a place where they match your vibe and you guys can actually gel together. 
From personal experience, I would say that having confidence in knowing what you want and deserve can make this part a little bit easier. Of course, I'm a human being and I have my moments where I look at other couples or even while watching some random TV show, just sink into this feeling of, man, like, where is my person, my partner? But it becomes easier to bounce back from that, knowing that I'm going to find my perfect match, perfect in quotes here, and I'm going to find someone who can really compliment me in life and someone that I can grow with. Knowing your own standards makes it so much easier to uphold them and you can stop wasting your time. I actually had a recent experience around this, which is what actually got me thinking about this topic. So since I have come home, I have moved back home with my family for COVID lockdown and In the periods of time where the lockdown provisions were eased where I live, I started getting back into online dating a little bit. I had some guys I spoke to closer to the beginning of lockdown. They were a bit of a mess. Um, We're not going to talk about that today. So I'm not going to get into this too much right now, but I, of course, have certain expectations in terms of what I'm looking for, which mainly have come out of like this five-step process that I just talked you through. But what I will mention is I personally want a partner who's a gentleman, who takes charge, um, who treats his woman like a lady. Now that taking charge portion of my expectations, it really helps me cut things uh, uh, down a lot, cut down the perspectives a lot, as a lot of the guys that I've encountered look for me to put in initial effort, for me to kind of, you know carry conversation or for me to ask about a date or plan the date and this is honestly not what I'm looking for at all and I say that because I've been through dates and been with guys who have been like that and it's never served me well I've never been happy with that kind of dynamic so for me personally it's just not it but regardless of this I actually in the last few months have managed to find two guys that I went on a couple of dates with And these guys were actually virtually exactly what I was looking for. What, where we were lacking was like having a connection that could actually lead us to pursuing anything further than just dating. Um, But other than that, like they were lovely, perfect gentlemen, very, very similar to what I was looking for. Um, So while I was dating, uh, going through these dates, I kept going through the options that I had on the app and one guy popped up. And he popped up as having liked my page or my profile, and I had the choice to match with him. And his profile showed me a few things that kind of hinted to me that he might not be what I'm looking for. Um, There's certain things that I kind of look for, which kind of tell me if someone is the type of person that I want. Um, But then I I had that little niggling voice in my head going, um, you know, don't be so picky. And that voice prompted me to just go ahead and match with him. And we started talking a little bit. And honestly, the conversation was not especially interesting, not surprising to me whatsoever. Um, But eventually he did ask me when I might be free. And I told him that it depends on what I have going on each week. Because during COVID, I'm actually really trying to keep myself busy so I don't die of boredom. Um, So he suggested that we go for a coffee sometime. And I'll be upfront with you guys right now. I'm not a coffee date person anymore. I've done my fair share. And in my personal experience, coffee dates don't lead to anything serious for me. Um, And something serious is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, And I feel like the kind of date a guy is willing to take you on or the kind of date he proposes to take you on can be kind of telling on what their personality is like. And so a coffee date to me shows that this guy is a minimal effort, he's putting in the bare minimum, and he's looking for something low risk. And this is not, these are not any of the qualities I'm looking for. So I let him know that we can grab a coffee if he wants to as friends, and we can start there. And he says that he'd like for it to go somewhere more serious than just friends. And I let him know that, you know, I'm fully open to that, but a coffee date isn't really a proper date to me. Um, But if you'd like to go for an actual meal, I'd love to. And so he got pretty defensive at this, to be honest. Uh, He told me that he's done coffee dates with tons of girls and it had never been an issue. 
and he asked me if I needed him to take me to some big fancy restaurant. And I was like, you know what? It's great that those girls were okay with it. I'm just telling you what my expectations are. And I ignored his sarcasm and said, you know, yeah, I would like a nice sit down meal. And if he doesn't want to do that, then that's totally not a problem. And he continued by saying that this is the first time he's ever heard of such a thing and that a date can just be getting ice cream or a walk in the park. Now, again, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with those kinds of dates. I'm just at a place where I want a certain level of effort put into the dates I go on because I think I deserve that. And my past experiences with low effort dates shows that there are low effort guys that have very different relationship goals to what I have. I want to feel wooed by my man, you know? So this guy let me know that my expectations were too high, okay? And I said, you know, that's okay if you think that. And he said, we should just be friends because I'm not impressed. And I told him, you know, dude, I'm not that impressed either. And we don't even need to be friends. I'm not on a dating app to find friends. So he ended our lovely conversation by saying, have you seen yourself? Good luck. To which I responded, of course I've seen myself. And I get to decide what I deserve, not you. Have a great day. And that was right before he unmatched with me. So what did I come out of this learning? I have this understanding now that there's absolutely nothing wrong with being picky, guys. When you've done your research, your due diligence, whatever you want to call it, being picky is 100% justified. When I was picky and I stuck to the expectations I have developed for myself, I went out with men who were actually at the level I know I want. They were gentlemen. The moment I made an exception, that person turned out to not embody any of the qualities I look for in a man, much less mutual respect, maturity, and gentlemanliness. If being picky means I'm going on less dates, but those dates are at the level I know I deserve, I'm actually very happy with that. You know, like quality over quantity here. After doing this work on myself, I feel like I'm mentally in a place where I'm confident that I will find the right person. Like, how could I not? There are billions of people on this earth. And I'm okay with it taking time if that means it's going to be the right person for me. I think that's worth the wait. Like I said before, I'm a human and the inner work never ends. And I have my moments where I compare myself to others, feel some impatience. But I'm always able to return back to kind of a Zen space where I just trust that what's mine is coming. I really hope that you guys can kind of resonate with some of what I've said today. I hope that if you have been feeling in a similar space to me where you're kind of just in this perpetual loop of just dating and it not working out, that maybe this will help you get through this a little bit easier. Um, now as promised, um, if you heard episode zero, then you will know, I want to finish off every one of my episodes with a Oracle card pull. So if you can just get, give me a moment, guys, I will pull the card and be right back. All right, ladies, I am back. I have pulled a card from the Work Your Light Oracle deck uh, by Rebecca Campbell. Uh, you may or may not know this is the one and only Oracle deck I own at the moment. And uh, the card that I pulled today is Mirror. Uh, and it says, who or what is triggering you? And I think this is, it's, it, Oracle as much as I believe in it, it still blows my mind when it just links so perfectly. And I think that this really, really works with what I've kind of talked about today. Um, the imagery is a woman, she's kind of like by the water's edge. There's uh, some flowers. Um, she's on sitting on some rocks and she's looking in her mirror, uh, sorry, into the reflection uh, cast by the water, which is serving as a mirror. And... Um, one thing that I'm noticing is that in the portion, which is, I guess, above water, the real image, uh, she has like the rocks behind her and there are um, not like dark, but there isn't just much to them. They're just the rocks there. And if you look uh, underneath where the reflection is, there's a lot of like shiny, sparkly imagery. Um, there's just a lot of light 
if she just kind of would turn and look at it. Uh, that's not what she's focused on in the image, but it is there. It's just right there if she would just turn and look. Okay, so I'm just going to read through the book that comes with it, and I'm sure this is going to be very relatable to what we just spoke about. So, the filter of our own experience is how we experience life 90% of the time. Through our own projections, when someone reminds us of an unhealed experience, we get triggered. Often, it's an unconscious thing. People and situations can trigger our mirrors to reflect back to us what we believe to be true about life, the universe, and ourselves. Mirrors pointing to our shadow and our light. Mirrors revealing the part of us that or parts of us that are yet to be accepted, witnessed, or loved. This card is guiding you to look closely at what experiences or people are currently triggering in you and what they could be mirroring back to you. When have you felt like this before? Could they be opportunities to heal something in you? Or are they shining a light on something that longs to be witnessed in you? This goes for the good and the bad. The good, those who we admire and put on a pedestal. If we do not realize that we are attracted to them because we are like them, we will need to cut them down in order to rise to their level. The bad, those we despise, are envious of and put down. If we do not realize that they trigger something in us, then it is still yet to be healed, and we will remain hurt and wounded ourselves. So there's a little inquiry at the end, uh, just questions for yourself. Who or what is triggering you? What is it in you that they are triggering? And what part of you longs to be witnessed? Again, I think this is totally, totally relatable to what we just spoke about. Looking at experiences or people that are triggering you, when have you felt like this before? This all goes back to the analysis step, right? Of the five steps that we talked about, about looking into where, what patterns you're always finding yourself in and what do those patterns mean for you? Are they good things? Are they bad things? Is it stuff you should be improving on? Do you want to improve on it? And recognizing how they link to, in this case, a partner, but really to anybody in your life what traits you have, and how they connect you to other people. So very, very relevant card. I'm so happy that that's the one that came out today. Um, I hope that that's something that you guys can ask yourselves today, no matter you're dating or not. Um, you can always, always reflect. And like the uh, reading from the booklet said, you know, things don't have to always come out as being something bad that you have to work on. It can sometimes be that something's good in you and you're just not recognizing it and you need to let yourself recognize it so that you can continue to be good to other people and continue having good in your life. So I hope that you guys found that message to really resonate with you. I hope that you guys enjoyed the five steps of the dating process that I outlined for, for you guys today. Um, please let me know if you guys think you maybe are in any of these stages or even if you're in a relationship now, if you maybe unknowingly went through these stages at some point. Um, please leave the uh, any thoughts you guys have, any requests for episodes, um, top episode topics in the comments for YouTube or Instagram. Um, all of the relevant links will be in the show notes and I will speak with you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.